So I want to welcome you to this session. Um, we're so glad to have Randy here. Randy's been playing for dances more than 40 years, and uh, his collection, New England Fiddler book, is uh, kind of the Bible for contra dance musicians. And he's also an extraordinary Irish fiddler put together with Jack Perrin, a wonderful collection of Irish fiddle tunes, the Irish traditional fiddle music. Randy's also an artist, and if you visit his website, you can see some of the extraordinary woodcuts that he's done. And he has such a long history. He's kind of our repository of uh, New England <laughs> contra dance lore and music. So we want to welcome Randy and uh, really enjoy the session. Randy, it's all yours. Um, I'm going to be featuring uh, some music um, in the legacy of four uh, gentlemen uh, from the Ralph Page era, Duke Miller, Newt Tolman, Ralph Page himself, and Alan Block. And first off, uh, I want to start with Duke Miller. Um, of course, originally, Duke was uh, made his home in Gloversville, New York, spent his summers in New Hampshire calling. His favorite hall was uh, the Fitzwilliam Town Hall, a large second floor dance hall. Now, Duke started every dance in Fitzwilliam with Lady Walpole's Reel. That's a contra dance. And he, he liked to have um, Fireman's Reel for that dance. So I'll play you start off with Fireman's Reel. real. Now, um, next up, I'll play a tune that um, Duke uh, loved to use for a square dance, as um, as did Ralph Page back in those days, and it's called Galice of Sherbrooke. And I discovered that as early as uh, 1949, in Ralph Page's periodical, a monthly issue of a Northern Junket, he mentions that tune, Galice of Sherbrooke, 1949. Uh, and another thing that's interesting is, uh, well, how did Duke and Ralph end up using the same music and actually some of the same squares? Um, well, in this issue of Northern Junket, there's an advertisement. It says, New Hampshire Fall Camp, September 1967 at the Inn at East Hill Farm in Troy, New Hampshire. And look who we have on staff. We have Duke and Ralph on staff. So um, it's probably likely that they exchanged uh, calling tips together. Um, so uh, let me just play Galisa Sherbrooke, popular tune for both Duke and Ralph. Thank <laughs> you. 
Lisa Sherbert, French Canadian tune. Okay, um, I'm going to pick up the uh, accordion for my next uh, number about uh, Duke Miller. And of course, he loved to do the singing calls. And one of his favorite ones was <clears throat> marching through Georgia. So I'll play a little bit of that. Um, and uh, this, this melody was uh, part of a song that was composed back um, in 1865, uh, just after General Sherman marched to the sea through Georgia in order to capture the Confederate city of Savannah. And the, the song and the melody just became enormously popular throughout the Union in the North after that. And somehow it got transferred into a square dance. Um, so here's a little bit of marching through Georgia. Here's a, a set of three tunes that I'd like to play as a medley, three couples dances. And Duke would always incorporate at least one of these throughout the evening. And um, here's Duke calling a dance. What a splendid plaid shirt. Huh? Um, he would ask one couple in particular to demonstrate the couple dance, holding up their very graceful style as a shining example to all the other dances. See if you can recognize these three couple dance tunes. Thank you. 
to the Isles was the first one, the Roberts was the middle one, and of course, Gay Gordon's at the very end. All right, one more tune from Duke Miller's Legacy. Um, he used to play this tune quite a bit for a quadrille. Uh, it's called O'Donnell Abu, and um, the title is actually from a song that was written way back in the 1840s. Uh, it commemorates Hugh O'Donnell's rebellion, rebellion against the English in the early 1600s in the north of Ireland. So here we are with um, O'Donnell Abu. <laughs> to the little town of Nelson, New Hampshire, and the home of uh, Newt Tolman, uh, the flute player, and of course the Nelson Town Hall, which is a hot spot, been a hot spot for country dancing for many years, many decades, and many centuries apparently. So um, Newt Tolman, of course, published a uh, tune book in 1969, the Nelson Music Collection. And back in those days, if you were an aspiring dance musician, you had to have this book. It's a wonderful book, still in print, put out by uh, Newt's son, Ren Tolman. You can get this book. Uh, in it were just wonderful tunes. I'll play uh, a tune from uh, this book called The Swallowtail Reel. Uh, of course, uh, Newt, when he used to come into the dance hall in Nelson. He was a towering figure of a man and he had a somewhat intimidating presence. Uh, and yet he was completely open to visitors and sit-in musicians on the stage, as was his musical partner, Kay Gilbert. So uh, here we go with a little bit of swallowtail reel Thank you. 
Hollow Tail Reef. Um, the next tune I'd like to play is um, called uh, The Morning Star, and it's uh, still a very popular tune today at dances and Irish sessions. Here's a uh, photo of Newt as a young man, courtesy of the Tolman family. Now, probably from the 1920s, that's Newt. And the interesting thing about this tune, it's a, it has a major A part and the second part's in a minor key. tune uh, again is from Newt's uh, Nelson Music Collection, a jig called Larry O'Gaff. It was a very popular tune back in the early days there in Nelson and it got spread around. Of course it's a tune of Irish origins, Larry O'Gaff. And um, I happened to come across an interesting field recording that was made in 1941 by Helen Hartness Flanders. And she recorded uh, a fiddler from Fitchburg, Massachusetts, playing this tune, uh, Larry O'Gaff. So I would like to share with you uh, Will Ayer's version of the tune uh, from 1941. And it's surprisingly similar to what you see in Newt's book, 1969, and uh, what is played even today. So you see that kind of continuity through the years of a tune. Larry O'Gaff. forgot to show you, this is a uh, picture of Will Ayer from Fitchburg, Massachusetts, all dressed up in that three-piece suit. Look at that, for a fiddle player. Imagine that. All right, moving on to uh, uh, a tune that, uh, of course, Newt would play all the time, uh, probably the most popular contradance of that era, still uh, very popular today, chorus G. Uh, now, uh, here's a uh, photograph of a 78 RPM, Victor RPM, Melly Dunham's orchestra playing chorus G. And this is, uh, was made in 1926, this recording. Um, and uh, my good friend, Jack Perrin and I, we started getting interested in Irish traditional fiddle music back in those days. And we would listen to albums and so forth. and we happened to hear a uh, recording of Irish musicians playing in a London pub and the tune that they were playing, they called it the chorus reel. And we were struck with how, uh, what a wonderful version of, of the tune. Uh, and we started using that version. Um, I think we introduced it at the Nelson Town Hall. It has an interesting third or high part in the tune. The, the way the Irish musicians played it, they put it into a modal setting. 
And so uh, when we played that for the dancers, it just seemed to get everyone's attention. It just seemed to drive the dance a little bit. And so I, I'll play, uh, this is the uh, 1926 version of that high part I'll play for you. And, and I know that Alan Block, when he played chorus jig, he used this older version. It went something like this. And the modal Irish version goes something like this. So that's the version that's current today. And who knows, maybe it'll swing back into the old version sometime. Chorus G. Now, um, one last tune from uh, the new Tolman legacy. Uh, this is a, a French Canadian tune called Old French. And here's a photo, a nice photo of Newt in his study. Of course, Newt was an accomplished author, a published author, as well as a flute player. And uh, this, was a, this was a very popular tune back then and still is today. Um, now, when Newt played the flute, he had a very light touch and crystal clear tone. Yeah, he played with lots of dynamics, loud and soft. And when Kay Gilbert backed him up on the piano, she liked to use the very low uh, register, the low bass chords in her accompaniment. And that combination was uh, really quite unique and amazing to hear. So my last uh, segment on uh, Newt will be Old French. up some uh, tunes from Ralph Page. Oh hi. oh, hi. Oh, hello, Randy. Hi, Zeke. Glad you're here. Me too. You got to mute your little speaker. Randy, you have to unmute now.
You have to unmute. Gotcha, Paul. Thank you. Okay, um, Ralph Page. Now, um, let's see. Um, here we here we have Ralph on the dance floor. And back in 1969, uh, the English um, Folk Dance and Song Society published a book of Ralph Page contras, included both dances and music. And we musicians call this the Orange Book. Um, I went to visit Ralph one time and I got a copy of his book, he signed it for me. Very nice of him. This is from January of uh, 1983. Um, so this first tune is composed by Ralph Page. He was a fiddle player. His father was also a fiddle player. I never heard him play the fiddle, uh, regrettably. But uh, he wrote this tune, McQuillan's Squeeze Box. And of course, Bob played piano for Ralph for many years. And I have one quick story to share about Bob. Um, we used to have a monthly contra dance right across the street in the East Alston Church. And years ago, and, and one hot summer's night, Bob McQuillan was hired to play piano and I was playing fiddle. And the door to the hall was wide open to get the breeze. And Bob was uh, facing, his back was to the dancers. The piano was against the wall. He couldn't see the dancers. And the piano was right next to that open door. And then I was sitting down at the end next to Bob. So we were pretty close together when I was fiddling. So we're in the middle of a tune playing away. And all of a sudden, a black cat comes walking through the door into the hall, turns towards the piano, and jumps up onto the keyboard at the very top and starts to walk down the keyboard. And meanwhile, Mac is still playing away, still pounding away. The cat steps over both of his hands, makes it all the way down to the end of the keyboard, jumps off, walks behind Mac and out the door. Well, you can believe we had a real good laugh while we were playing about that. And I think Bob wrote a, one of his tunes, something about the cat on the keyboard. Yeah. So here we have McQuillan's squeeze box by Ralph Page. <laughs> another one of Ralph's compositions. And this is 117 Washington Street, right in downtown Keene. This was Ralph in Ada Page's home. And uh, I used to occasionally visit Ralph at his home. He would invite me into his kitchen and then into his library, his den. Um, after getting to know him, uh, my brother and I would sometimes be hired to play for his Tuesday, uh, Tuesday night dance at the YWCA in Cambridge. And I recall transporting him to one of those dances. He, he never got a driver's license, never owned a car. In the car, uh, we told great stories back and forth and he smoked his cigar all the way down and all the way back. Uh, but he kept the window ajar a little bit, which was good. <laughs> so um, this is a tune that I think is the absolute essence of a New England 
dance tune, a jig. It's called the Rocking Chair Jig um, by Ralph Page. <laughs> Here's a newspaper photograph um, from about 1950. And then we have Ralph dancing on the floor. I don't know who the ladies are, but the, the fiddler in the background is Albert Quigley from Nelson. And I, uh, for this next tune, uh, it's actually a, a, a dance that goes along with the tune. It's called the Huntsman's Chorus. And I discovered that Ralph, um, uh, started using this dance in about 1938, right at the beginning of his calling career. He learned, got the dance from a caller in New Jersey. And uh, it turns out that um, the melody, the Huntsman's Chorus, is from an opera that was composed in 1821 by a German uh, named Karl von Weber. And this melody uh, became very popular and it spread from Germany to England and there from there to New England. Um, I know that uh, Dudley Loftman and the Canterbury Country Dance Orchestra used to play this tune a lot for dances and they recorded it on uh, their album, 1972. Uh, so this is the Huntsman's Chorus. <laughs> a nice old photograph of Ralph at the microphone, call, ready to call a dance. Next up is a uh, staple square that Ralph used to do, My Darling Nellie Gray. This song was composed in 1856. It tells a very sad story of a, um, an African-American slave uh, whose sweetheart, her name was Nellie Gray, was abducted, kidnapped by white slave traders and taken from her home in Kentucky to Georgia. And in the song, we learn that he never sees her again. Um, and uh, the chorus of the song goes something like this. Oh, my darling Nellie Gray, they have taken you away. I'll never see my darling anymore. 
Hey, I've taken you to Georgia for to work your life away, and you're gone from that old Kentucky shore. So uh, in the actual dance, uh, it, the song itself was a, a rallying cry for the abolitionist movement across the entire country just before the Civil War. Um, and it was a very popular song and melody, and somehow it got made into a contra dance. In the contra dance, you actually get to go home and swing with your Nellie Gray. <laughs> tune from the Ralph Page era, Ralph Page legacy. And um, this is uh, one of his own tunes called Rollstone Mountain. And that is actually a place in uh, Fitchburg, Massachusetts, which is only about an hour's drive from Keene. And uh, I know that Ralph used to call dances down in Fitchburg. Um, At about this time, uh, I started going to the Neffa Festival. I'll share this with you. That's the Neffa Festival from 1974. There you see Ralph calling. I think that's Ed Koenig on fiddle. I'm not sure that's me, yours truly on fiddle. And next to me is Jack Perrin playing. And of course, Mac at the piano, 1974. Um, I think it was 1981 that Ralph Page, along with my brother and me, were hired to do dances and workshops out in Seattle. What I recall is that he held a room full of dancers spellbound about his ideas of dance etiquette with accompanying stories. Uh, Ralph was 78 years old at the time, still vibrant and very enthusiastic about dancing. So again, one of Ralph Page's sterling compositions, Rollstone Mountain. to uh, Alan Block now from the town of uh, Francistown in New Hampshire. And of course, um, 
Alan was a sandal maker, a poet, book publisher, and an excellent fiddler. And his first love was actually Southern Appalachian fiddle music, but he also immersed himself in New England contra dance tunes and became a role model for many young fiddlers. Uh, his style included smooth bowing and mellow tone with no hint of scratchiness. Um, now, Alan was classically trained. Um, growing up, he studied classical violin. And if you saw him play, he would hold his left hand perfectly correctly in the classical way, which allowed him to play in positions up the neck on fiddle tunes, which most of us can't do. But his bowing, uh, he would hold the bow up the, up the stick, kind of choking up. And that's a classical no-no, you don't do that. But I think you, he got added control for the very fast and quick passages that were required for contra dance, playing for contra dance. So, Here's a tune that uh, Alan used to play a lot, a uh, lovely tune called The Rose Tree. out an album of his fiddle music uh, early 1970s um, and I was asked to uh, do some artwork for the cover of his album and uh, what I decided to do was a wood engraving of an old nursery rhyme. Uh, here's a print of the engraving. The old man heard the tune as he sat in his room and danced on top of his head. So you can see there's kind of a uh, juxtaposition of black and white squares next to each other. And my idea was to place them side by side for the album. And this is, this is what it came out to be. This is Alan's Alive and Well and Fiddling, Alan Block. And here are a couple, um, couple of tunes that Alan popularized and did a great job of playing, Speed the Plow and The Morpeth Rant.
I'm almost at the end of my program. I have one more Allen Block tune to share with you. Uh, this is a tune uh, called, it's called Quindaro Hornpipe. It's, all, it's found in the Nelson Music Collection. And um, he, he used to play this tune with great passion and style. He didn't play it ever too fast, uh, even for a contra dance. He kept the tempo down. Um, anyway, here's a, I did some research. I discovered that there was a person named Quindaro Brown. And none of us back in those days, we don't, where, what is this tune? Where is it from? Who, who or where is Quindaro? We, none of us could ever figure it out. Well, here's a photograph of Quindaro Brown. She was the daughter of a Native American chief of the Wyandot tribe. And in the 1840s, the Wyandots were forced to move from their home in Ohio to Kansas. And when they got to Kansas, eventually Quindaro, she established a town site in 1856 in present day Kansas City. And the town of Quindaro became the first free state port on the Missouri River. And that was a beacon of hope for the anti-slavery advocates. So there's the background of that. I never knew this uh, Quindaro Hornpipe. Thank you everyone 